Session 29 Origins and Related Words 1. The French drillmaster Jean Martinet was the Inspector General of Infantry during the reign of King Louis XIV, and a stricter, more fanatic drillmaster France had never seen. It was from this time that the French army's reputation for discipline dated, and it is from the name of this Frenchman that we derive our English word Martinet. The word is always used in a derogatory sense and generally shows resentment and anger on the part of the user. The secretary who calls his boss a martinet, the wife who applies the epithet to her husband, the worker who thus refers to the foreman, these speakers all show their contempt for the excessive, inhuman discipline to which they are asked to submit. Since Martinet comes from a man's name, in the brief intermission which follows we shall discover that a number of picturesque English words are similarly derived, there are no related forms built on the same root. There is an adjective martinetish and another noun form, martinetism, but these are used only rarely. 2. A Greek figshower, sycophant, comes to us from the Greeks. According to Shipley's Dictionary of Word Origins, when a fellow wants to get a good mark, he may polish up an apple and place it on teacher's desk, his classmates call such a lad an apple shiner. Less complimentary localities use the term bootlicker. The Greeks had a name for it, fig shower. Sycophant is from gr sycon, fig, and phanian, to show. This was the fellow that informed the officers in charge when, one, the figs in the sacred groves were being taken, or, two, when the Smyrna fig dealers were dodging the tariff. Thus, a sycophant may appear to be a sort of stool pigeon since the latter curries the favor of police officials by peaching on his fellow criminals. Sycophants may use this means of ingratiating themselves with influential citizens of the community, or they may use flattery, servile attentions, or any other form of insinuating themselves into someone's good graces. A sycophant practices sycophancy and has a sycophantic attitude. All three forms of the word are highly uncomplimentary, use them with care. Material may be so delicate or fine in texture that anything behind it will show through. The Greek prefix dia means through, and phanian, as you now know, means to show, hence such material is called diaphanous. Do not use the adjective in reference to all material that is transparent, for example, you would not call glass diaphanous, even though you can see right through it, but only material that is silky, gauzy, filmy, and, in addition, transparent or practically transparent. The word is often applied to female garments, nightgowns, negligees, etc. 3. Just for one's own amusement dilettanti is from the Italian verb dilettare, to delight. The dilettanti paints, writes, composes, plays a musical instrument, or engages in scientific experiments purely for amusement, not to make money, become famous, or satisfy a deep creative urge, the latter, I presume being the justifications for the time that professional artists, writers, composers, musicians, poets, and scientists spend at their chosen work. A dilettantish attitude is superficial, unprofessional, dilettantism is superficial, part-time dabbling in the type of activity that usually engages the full time and energy of the professional artist or scientist. Do not confuse the dilettante, who has a certain amount of native talent or ability, with the tyro, who is the inexperienced beginner in some art, but who may be full of ambition, drive, and energy. To call a person a tyro is to imply that he is just starting in some artistic, scientific, or professional field, he's not much good yet because he has not had time to develop his skill, if any. The dilettante usually has some skill, but isn't doing much with it. On the other hand, anyone who has developed consummate skill in an artistic field, generally allied to music, is called a virtuoso, like Heifetz or Menuhin on the violin, Horowitz or Rubinstein on the piano. Pluralize virtuoso in the normal way, virtuosos, or if you wish to sound more sophisticated, give it the continental form, virtuosi. Similarly, the plural of dilettanti is either dilettantes or dilettanti. The I ending for a plural is the Italian form and is common in musical circles. For example, libretto, the story, or book, of an opera, may be pluralized to libretti, concerto, a form of musical composition, is pluralized concerti. However, the anglicized librettos and concertos are perfectly correct also. Libretto, libretti, 
concerto, and concerti. Suit your plural form, I would suggest, to the sophistication of your audience. 4. Masculine women virago comes, oddly enough, from the Latin word for man, vir. Perhaps the derivation is not so odd, after all, a virago, far from being stereotypically feminine, i.e., timid, delicate, low-spoken, etc., is stereotypically masculine in personality, coarse, aggressive, loudmouthed. Termigant and harridan are words with essentially the same uncomplimentary meaning as virago. To call a brawling woman a virago, a termigant, and a harridan is admittedly repetitious, but is successful in relieving one's feelings. 5. The old man Nicolas Chauvin, soldier of the French Empire, so vociferously and unceasingly aired his veneration of Napoleon Bonaparte that he became the laughingstock of all Europe. Thereafter, an exaggerated and blatant patriot was known as a chauvinist, and still is today. Chauvinism, by natural extension, applies to blatant veneration of, or boastfulness about, any other affiliation, besides one's country. To be patriotic is to be normally proud of, and devoted to, one's country, to be chauvinistic is to exaggerate such pride and devotion, to an obnoxious degree. We might digress here to investigate an etymological side road, down which the word, patriotic beckons. Patriotic is built on the Latin word pater, patres, father, one's country is, in a sense, one's fatherland. Let us see what other interesting words are built on this same root. 1. Patrimony, an inheritance from one's father. The moni comes from the same root that gives us money, namely, Juno Moneta, the Roman goddess who guarded the temples of finance. The adjective is patrimonial. 2. Patronymic, a name formed on the father's name, like Johnson, son of John, Martinson, Aronson, etc. The word combines pater, patres with Greek onima, name. Onima, plus the Greek prefix sin, dash, with or together, form synonym, a word of the same name, or meaning, etymologically a together name. Onima, plus the prefix anti, against, forms antonym, a word of opposite meaning, etymologically an against name. Onima plus Greek homos, the same, forms homonym, a word that sounds like another but has a different meaning and spelling, like bear, bear, way, way, to, 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 etc., etymologically a same name. A homonym is more accurately called a homophone, a combination of homos, the same, and phone, sound. The adjective form of synonym is synonymous. Can you write, and pronounce, the adjective derived from, antonym? Homonym? Homophone? 3. Paternity, fatherhood, as to question someone's paternity, to file a paternity suit in order to collect child support from the assumed, accused, or self-acknowledged father. The adjective is paternal, fatherly. Paternalism is the philosophy or system of governing a country, or of managing a business or institution, so that the citizens, employees, or staff are treated in a manner suggesting a father-children relationship. Such a system sounds, and often is, benign and protective, but plays havoc with the initiative, independence, and creativity of those in subordinate roles. The adjective is paternalistic. 4. Patriarch, a venerable, father-like old man, an old man in a ruling, father-like position. Here pater, patres is combined with the Greek root archine, to rule. The adjective is patriarchal, the system is a patriarchy. 5. Patricide, the killing of one's father. Pater, patres combines with side, a suffix derived from the Latin verb keto, to kill. The adjective is patricidal. This list does not exhaust the number of words built on pater, father, but is sufficient to give you an idea of how closely related many English words are. In your reading, you will come across other words, containing the letters pater or pater, you will be able to figure them out once you realize that the base is the word father. You might, if you feel ambitious, puzzle out the relationship to the father idea in the following words, checking with a dictionary to see how good your linguistic intuition is, 1, patrician 2, patron 3, patronize 4, patronizing, ADJ, 5, Paterfamilias 6. Padre. 6. The old lady Pater, Patres is father. Mater, Matres is mother. For example, 
1. Matriarch, the mother ruler, the mother person that controls a large household, tribe, or country. This word, like patriarch, is built on the root archine, to rule. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth or Queen Victoria, England was a matriarchy. Can you figure out the adjective form? 2. Maternity, motherhood 3. Maternal, motherly 4. Matron, an older woman, one sufficiently mature to be a mother. The adjective matronly, M-A-Y-T-R-N-L-Y, conjures up for many people a picture of a woman no longer in the glow of youth and possibly with a bit of added weight in the wrong places, so this word should be used with caution. It may be hazardous to your health if the lady you are so describing is of a tempestuous nature, or is a virago. 5. Alma mater, etymologically, sole mother, actually, the school or college from which one has graduated, and which in a sense is one's intellectual mother. 6. Matrimony, marriage. Though this word is similar to patrimony in spelling, it does not refer to money, as patrimony does, unless, that is, you are cynical enough to believe that people marry for money. As the language was growing, marriage and children went hand in hand, it is therefore not surprising that the word for marriage should be built on the Latin root for mother. Of course, times have changed, but the sexist nature of the English language has not. The noun suffix moni indicates state, condition, or result, as in sanctimony, parsimony, etc. The adjective is matrimonial. 7. Matricide, the killing of one's mother. The adjective? 7. Murder most foul. Murder unfortunately is an integral part of human life, so there is a word for almost every kind of killing you can think of. Let's look at some of them. 1. Suicide, s. Sid, killing oneself, intentionally, side plus sway, of oneself. This is both the act and the person who has been completely successful in performing the act, partially doesn't count, also, in colloquial usage, suicide is a verb. The adjective? 2. Fratricide, f-r-a-t-r, sid, the killing of one's brother, side plus frater, fratris, brother. The adjective? 3. Sororicide, the killing of one's sister, side, plus soror, sister. The adjective? 4. Homicide, the killing of a human being, side, plus homo, person. In law, homicide is the general term for any slaying. If intent and premeditation can be proved, the act is murder and punishable as such. If no such intent is present, the act is called manslaughter and receives a lighter punishment. Thus, if your mate-slash-lover-slash-spouse makes your life unbearable and you slip some arsenic into his, her coffee one bright morning, you are committing murder, that is, if he, she succumbs. On the other hand, if you run your victim down, quite accidentally, with your car, bicycle, or wheelchair, with no intent to kill, you will be accused of manslaughter, that is, if death results and if you can prove you didn't really mean it. It's all rather delicate, however, and you might do best to put thoughts of justifiable homicide out of your mind. The adjective? 5. Regicide, rej, sid, the killing of one's king, president, or other governing official. Booth committed regicide when he assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Adjective? Derivation, Latin rex, regis, king, plus, side. 6. Uxoricide, UKSAWR, Sid, the killing of one's wife. Adjective? Derivation, Latin uxor, wife, plus, side. 7. Mariticide, MRIT, Sid, the killing of one's husband. Adjective? Derivation, Latin maritis, husband, plus, side. 8. Infanticide, the killing of a newborn child. Adjective? Derivation, Latin infants, infantis, baby, plus, side. 9. Genocide, the killing of a whole race or nation. This is a comparatively new word, coined in 1944 by a UN official named Raphael Lemkin, to refer to the mass murder of the Jews, Poles, etc. ordered by Hitler. Adjective? Derivation, Greek genos, race, kind, plus, side. 10. Parasite, the killing of either or both parents. Adjective? Lizzie Borden was accused of, and tried for, parasite in the 1890s, but was not convicted. 
a bit of doggerel that was popular at the time, and, so I had been told, little girls jumped rope too, went somewhat as follows, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother forty wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father forty-one. Review of etymology prefix, root, suffix meaning one. Sicon fig two. Fainiand to show three. Dia, through four. Dear man, male, five. Pater, Patry's father six. Sinwith, together seven. Anima name eight. Anti against nine. Homo's the same ten. Phone sound eleven. ITY noun suffix twelve. Ism noun suffix thirteen. Al adjective suffix fourteen. I see adjective suffix fifteen. Are kind to rule sixteen. Side killing seventeen. Mater, Matri's mother eighteen. Alma soul nineteen. Moni noun suffix twenty. Sway of oneself twenty one. Frater, Fratris brother twenty two. Sorrow sister twenty three. Homo person, human twenty four. Rex, Regis king twenty five. Uxer wife twenty six. Maritis husband twenty seven. Infants, infantis baby twenty eight. Genos race, kind, 